Good afternoon. It's Thursday, March 28. I'm Herman Green with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching online at onespotmedia.com. The East Portland by-election will be under increased scrutiny following confirmation from two local watch groups on Thursday that they will be partnering to observe the day's activities. The National Integrity Action, NIA, and Citizens Action for Free and Fair Election, CAFE, said among their responsibilities on the day is to ensure breaches are reported and rectified. Agents working for the groups will be stationed across the constituency, including at polling stations, to record proceedings. The groups have expressed their concerns about the claims and counterclaims of alleged campaign breaches from both parties in the lead-up to the by-election. Of course, we have a concern that uh, expenditure may be undertaken by government at a time when it seems to be associated with the timing of the elections. Uh, and we, um, we are looking at what recommendations we can make uh, to prevent those concerns recurring because they are recorded from time to time. The East Portland by-election is set for next Thursday, April 4. It is being contested by the JLP's Anne-Marie Vaz and the PNP's Damian Crawford. Both are seeking to replace Dr. Linville Bloomfield, who was found murdered two months ago. The laws governing how the security forces fight corruption need more teeth. That's the word from President of the PSOJ, Howard Mitchell, who was speaking at his organization's breakfast forum this morning. He noted that with the level of corruption taking place within the society, it's evident that a cloak of invisibility is being placed over the issues. Mr. Mitchell says that cloak is one which is being used to protect the country's social and business interactions. And we call it something else so that we can participate in it and make some money from it without feeling any twinges of guilt when we pontificate on those corrupt politicians at our cocktail parties and our fancy dinners. He further noted that despite pulling the cloak over corruption, there are ardent calls for law reforms, but he believes nothing will come of it. That by design, the laws will have little or no teeth and the enforcement agencies will be under-resourced. And I say these things not to belittle the efforts of those patriots and people of integrity among us who have sacrificed greatly to fashion and implement and to attempt to enforce these laws, but to draw your attention to one simple truism. We are a society of laws, but a society is only as effective as the people in it. Laws are but our tools. We are the workmen. It appears there has been a softening of the stance taken by the parties involved in the controversy surrounding two Calabar high school athletes and a teacher at the institution. Attorney at law Christopher Townsend, who is representing the two Calabar students accused of assaulting a teacher, says there is an increasing possibility that the issue will be diffused amicably. The teacher, Sanjay Shaw, claims he was assaulted by the boys at a camp on the school compound on December 15 during a dispute over sleeping mats. Attorney at law Christopher Townsend, who is representing the two Calabar students, accused of assaulting a teacher, says there is an increasing possibility that the issue will be diffused amicably. The teacher, Sanjay Shaw, claims he was assaulted by the boys at a camp on the school compound on December 15 during a dispute over sleeping mats. However, star athletes Christopher Taylor and Ajora Russell have denied the allegations. Mr. Townsend states that steps are being taken towards fixing the situation. He gave an update while speaking yesterday on RJR's Beyond the Headlines. I can't speak much for the school. They're represented by, by council. But I have been told that there have been um, talks um, in terms of finding an amicable way to diffuse the situation. Certainly, we embrace that. And certainly, they can mediate between themselves because mediation is usually a process um, that invites the, the third party, at least referred by the court. I do not believe that court action is contemplated by anyone at this time. Where it has reached, I do believe that the talks are going on, and I do believe that some amicable arrangement will arrive that. Mr. Townsend also commented on the position of the parents and whether they are satisfied with how Calabar is handling the matter. At this point, I can say 
that everyone is, is approaching satisfaction. We were a little bit concerned before, but now um, the school has reached out to them in a particular way, and they're now a little bit more comfortable in the manner in which the situation is being handled. Machine Masters, TVJ News. Some students, their parents and teachers have been left worrying after yesterday's sitting of the primary exit profile PEP examination. The students did the grade 6 language art performance task on Wednesday, but a critical part of the exam instructions did not reach some students until after the exam, as the Education Ministry apparently sent it out late. On Wednesday, grade 6 students sat the language arts performance task paper for the PEP examination. However, once again, the PEP exams are causing a stir. President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA, Dr. Garth Anderson, explained that the morning of the exam, the Education Ministry made changes to the paper and rushed it to the institutions. Supplementary instructions were issued to school via email to give students instruction that they should respond to a part C on the paper, which was not in the original instruction. However, complaints from some teachers are that those new instructions did not reach some students until after the examinations. The schools got it through their emails, and you would appreciate that schools have different challenges relating to technology and so on. And so, especially those in the rural parts did not see it until very late. And that is part of this, the challenge we are faced with at this time. It's understood that the students, as well as their parents and teachers, are now expressing concern as they fear the miscommunication of the change may impact the students' interpretation, answers, and grade. Dr. Anderson says, in light of the valid concern, he contacted the ministry seeking to have the matter addressed. He says the education ministry has promised to take the issue into consideration. I have been assured that the matter will be addressed in a positive way. I do not have the specifics, but I would want to believe that it will be addressed during marking. Uh, several things can be done where that is concerned to correct the matter. The Education Ministry says the $20 million which was committed to Jamaica College towards the school's Ashenheim Stadium has not been transferred to the institution. In a statement issued to the media yesterday, the ministry said the money remains with the government. The Ministry of Education says on the instructions of Prime Minister Andrew Holness, the contribution was halted as the review of the ministry's systems and programs continue. It says as part of the review process, the ministry is ass assessing all requested, proposed or planned expenditure of this nature. Ten million of the $30 million which was committed by Prime Minister Andrew Holness at the opening of the stadium on February 20 has already been given to Jamaica College. The money was donated through the Sports Development Foundation. The ministry says the school was also the beneficiary of a grant which was used for repairs of the school's infrastructure. Two persons are dead and three others nursing bullet wounds following a gun attack in Rose Heights, St. James this morning. The community is also tense as residents fear more attacks. It's reported that about 8.30, a group of persons was on the Rose Heights main road when gunmen approached them and opened fire, hitting them. They were taken to hospital where Duane Steneth and a man identified only as Tino were pronounced dead. The residents are complaining about the new flare-up of violence in their community. It's like um, a woman conceived and after nine months she can't bring forth a child. I'm saying all of that because this community has gone through everything to make it better, you know. We have introduced peace, the way forward, and um, it has been rejected. Um, it has been, as I said over and over, there has been no support, um, and it's so, it is so bad. You know, my heart is really broken this morning. The police say they have identified three suspects in connection with the shooting. However, their identities have not been released. Another construction site has, one of, has seen one of its workers electrocuted by high-tension wires. This time, it, the incident happened in Mandeville, Manchester on Thursday morning. According to the driver who transported the victim to the hospital, the man was working on the roof of the construction site when a piece of metal he was working with got entangled with the high-tension wire. He recounts what transpired. I was going to hear the, psh, 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 psh. the fire and the flames. And so I turned around. It wasn't red. It was all blue. I mean, like sky blue. 
I'm a look, I see my friend. No friend, sorry. I'm charged like that. I encourage me so much on the road to be a good driver. Head where I see my come down. I'm a reach to him, run, run, and co worker them, my taxi drivers, everybody, Christian, everybody. You mean like everybody from that town park, me at Mandeville, town park. Earlier this month, another construction worker was electrocuted in a similar manner in Balaclava, St. Elizabeth. Residents then called for the JPS to address high tension wires that hang close to buildings as a matter of safety. The Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, KSAMC, says the alternative roadway for the closed Erie Castle Bridge is almost complete. KSAMC representatives were at the location on Wednesday afternoon where it was revealed that motorists are already being allowed to use the facility. As for the bridge replacement, Mayor of Kingston, Delroy Williams, said that's being treated as an emergency. We have received the estimate from the NAA. We have also been assured that the parts, bridge parts, are mostly in place and that the KCAMC will be moving quickly to, to procure the contractor for, for the bridge. The damaged bridge also caused water disruptions in that community and others supplied by the Seaview treatment plant. Mayor Williams says that supply has been restored. He noted, however, that there may be another disruption in water supplies when the bridge is being installed, but says residents will be advised in advance of the interruption. British High Commissioner to Jamaica, Asif Ahmad, has poured cold water on the state's plans to develop Vernon Field in Clarendon. He reasons the current ports need to show signs of bursting at the proverbial seams due to demand for developments like Vernon Field to be worthwhile. Development of the aerodrome at Vernon Field has begun and has been championed by Central Clarendon Member of Parliament Mike Henry. The British High Commissioner added his voice to the discussion at a Jamaica Employers Federation function. Could work unless Jamaica reaches a point where domestic demand for passengers and goods starts to put pressure on these facilities. Mad in the meantime feels Jamaica is not making use of market opportunities available in Europe, particularly Great Britain. This, he says, has helped foster an illicit practice by some countries to market their products on the brand Jamaica. And because you're not doing it, other people are doing it for you. People from Ghana are sending things to London, calling it made in Jamaica or Jamaica style. The demand is there, but the, 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 the path is, is not being well used. And for sports, we now join the team at the National Stadium for an overview of activities on day three of the Issa Grace Kennedy Boys and Girls Championship. Thank you very much, Herman. You join us here on day three of the Issa Grace Kennedy Boys and Girls Championships. We've had a point change in the girls' side of competition. The class three girls' high jump has been completed, and I can tell you that Anishaka McDonald of their technical, she cleared 1.75 meters to win. I had of Tarian Caven of Arden, 1.74 meters, and Michaela Cunningham of Wilmers, 1.74 meters. Of course, both McDonald and Caven they tried for the new record of 1.77 meters, but they came back down to 1.75 where Ola McDonald, well, she went clear. I can give you the latest point standings on the girls' side. It, as you were, Rossi's, they continued to lead with 23 points, followed by defending a champion, Edwin Allen, on 16.5 points, and Wilmers, they are third. Well, Stets, they are third at 14 points. On the boys' side, it's as you were. Five finals are set to be contested this evening on the boys' side, but here's the point standing so far. After two finals, it's Kingston College on 27 points, followed by Calabar, 16 points, and JC on nine points. A bit of news coming out of the championships this morning. I can tell you that Calabar's class three, four by one team has been reinstated to compete after they lodged an appeal last evening after being disqualified for a lane violation. We've had some 100 meter qualification taking place so far today. And Tia Clayton of Edwin Allen, she ran 11.81 seconds to win her heat looking quite easily along with her sister also qualified Tia Clayton 12.12, but 
possibly the most impressive we've seen so far today has been uh, the defending champion Kivona Davis from class two she easily easily won her eat and she has qualified for the next round here at champs 2019 of course the 100 meter final set for friday reporting from the national stadium from the issa grace canada boys and girls championships i'm keon reyna thank you keon and that wraps up the midday news i'm herman green please join us at seven for the primetime news package on behalf of the news sports and production teams good afternoon